So, hello guys. So, are you ready? Tonight's hello, gonna be a good night. Good night. Good night. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, let me introduce ourselves. So, my name is Philippe Sombat. Um, I have 20 years experience in sales, especially in big corporates. And I am also one of the co-founders of Tweetworld Pro, which is a social media startup. So I have trained more than 100 startups so far, and this is absolutely great, actually. Uh, the world of startups and entrepreneurs is absolutely great. And hello, everybody. My name is Pascal Pitel. Uh, I have also a lot of sales experience. I started in 86 in a sales position, and after that, a lot of sales positions. I used to be uh, training uh, manager for Xerox during about 15 years, last 15 years. So when together, Philip and I, we started the Sales Academy and we are both very passionate about sales. Absolutely, Isn't it, Philip? Pascal. Yes, so I have, first of more. all, Philip Camart, uh, and I would like to welcome him, so you can come. Um, who represents the, the French-speaking part of Belgium. And then I have Philip Hornart with an F from Flanders, uh, Brugge, and so let me introduce uh, Philippe Camart. So he has different roles uh, as sales account manager at HP and EMC. He has been also regional sales manager for the startup uh, called EasyWiz. Uh, he had uh, been administrator at Oracle Luxembourg. Uh, driving the business to a significant growth, actually, we can say it, with his sales team, of course, not alone. <laughs> and he's now key account director for the European institutions, where he recently signed, and congratulations for it, a four-year framework contract of 175 million euros. So we can applaud him. <laughs> Sector, the largest contract for the Commission. So, uh, Philip has prepared for us um, a nice presentation, um, and his title uh, is absolutely great: is hiring winners. So he will give you the best tips, I believe, to hire the best sales winners. So, floor so, is yours. Yes, thank you. Let Let me first ask you some question. How many people here in the room would need to hire people in the next 12 months? So that's already good news. <laughs> then I would like to ask another question. Um, how long, I mean, before interviewing a candidate? Imagine you have, you have a meeting with a, a new candidate. How long will you spend to prepare this interview before meeting this candidate? I will give you some choice. Less than five minutes? Who thinks he will? Between five and 30 minutes? Between 30 and one hour? And more than one hour? Okay. Then I would like to ask you another question, but therefore I would like you to stand up. But I don't know if that would be possible. But okay, <laughs> forget it. Now, the question is usually how many questions would you ask during an interview to a candidate? First option less than five. Between five and ten. Twen twenty five. 25.50, yeah, more than 100, no, okay, 
So usually, when I, I have an interview, I, put, I ask more than 100 questions. And I usually take one hour of my time to have a good interview. Because I think, um, where is the clicker? Because I think that hiring people is very important, and do you know why it's so important for you? Because actually, um, having the right people in your team will make your success. That's the reason why it's so important to ask the right question and find the right people in your team, because they will make your success. So. Usually, what are the issues you, you can have during interviewing people? You will make the wrong choice. Um, you didn't find some important elements about the candidates. Maybe you didn't ask the right questions. And by not asking the right questions, you will not discover that maybe this person lie someone maybe to you or didn't give all elements that you want to know about about this person and yeah or you take a decision based on your gut feeling instead of facts and that's the real important is it's only about facts it's not about feelings guts it's about is it really is this person in this situation, the right person I need. Because your objective is this, you have an issue. The, the following issue is you have a business need that you need to satisfy. You need, that, in that case, to implement your hiring strategy because you want the right person in the right job at the right time, doing the right things. And again, this is very important because one person can fit perfectly well for, uh, I will say, um, in his job or a mission for one year, two years, because you think that he has the right profile for that, but you know already in advance that in two or three years' times, because your business will move this way, this person will probably not be the right one. That's also very important to analyze when you think about your strategic plan. Or you can already think that this person will fit perfectly well in your strategy in another position. So what's the strategy actually is what is success what will be the success in 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 his job uh, of that person? In fact, it's a question of what behavior that person will need to drive success. And in fact, it's about how the strategy is predict the person behavior. And how can you predict person behavior? By asking the right questions. So, and how can you discover this? Only because you need to know how this person behaved in the past. So you have a sheet of paper called Curriculum Vitae in front of you. And which question will you ask for before inter interviewing this person? So how to select the winners? It's based, of course, on your business model, on your needs. So it means that you need to set clearly what are your outcomes. What do you want as a result? You want to achieve 20% growth in the next three years in this area. You want revenue increase by X percent in this, uh, for, for, for this particular business. These are the outcomes. You need to be clear about what outcomes you want. Then, based on the outcomes, you will define what are the real critical requirements. So, in fact, which behavior, which knowledge, which skill need the person to have to achieve your expectation and your goals. And in that case, it's so crucial to ask the right question because only effective questions will drive quality. And by driving 
and having the right data quality on the person, you will take the wrong, the, the, sorry, the right hiring decision. So, in a nutshell, it's you need a clear picture of the successful person because um, you need to need uh, yeah, what this person we need to ac uh, accomplish, but also what is the knowledge, the skills, ability, and behavior to get it done. So that's that's very very important, and the hiring uh, requirements are of course knowledge. So what must the person know to be successful, what the person need to do to be successful, and ability, how does the person need to behave uh, being successful. So knowledge you can get trained for having more knowledge, skills you can evolve and adapt to have more skills, but behavior and ability, it's in the, in the person, that's something more difficult to, to change actually, or to be trained for changing form of behavior. So these are the important elements to consider when you will interview your candidate. So in fact, you need to identify what are for you the um, success factors. Then you need to ask yourself, okay, what are the critical requirements to achieve my success factors? And in that case, you need to first be clear about the job description. Look to, I think this is important, analyze what was uh, the behavior of successful people in your team and what is also the unsuccessful people in your team. And based on that, you can ask and prepare the right question to the candidate you will interview. So prepare your interview is it's, uh, I say, one hour preparation. I didn't put all the questions that I have, but I want to highlight here a little bit the structure. So what is the expected outcome? And this is, of course, some example. So what is for me the expected outcome, short term, mid term, and long term? And you can have 10 points here, 15 points here, and, and 10 points here, okay? So you can, in fact, this is, in your, your strategy that you need to put on, 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 on paper, on a document where, where you want to go in terms of strategy and vision. So for instance, this person needs at least to be successful to visit 12 clients per week. Is he capable to do it, yes or no? Maybe you will find that this person is not capable to do it, but ask the question, did the person before, in the past, get 12 clients, 12 uh, meetings with clients per week? If the, qu the answer is no, forget it. Increase the pipeline by, I don't know, 100,000 euro per week or 1 million per week. Does this person have the capabilities and does this person already have increased the pipeline by a million euro per week? Is he capable to close deal? That's also important for sales is, can I, can this person close a deal at the right moment with, on the, with the right budget? Is he capable to meet C-level client? Does this person can generate trust? And, and the, does a, a C-level consider this person as the trusted advisor? Also, this is the kind of expectation I put on paper before having an interview. Then I talk about the expectation about um, where I want to go, I, I, I mean in terms of, of strategy, of sales strategy, and then I put what is for me the critical hiring requirements. So basically is okay, I've shown my expectation, now I will go further and say, okay, what, what kind of, um, what, what do I expect from that person to be successful? For instance, and, and again, you can have questions like this, you can have 20 points like this, or 30 points uh, like this, where 
you will say, okay, for being successful, I need someone having presentation skills. What I mean by presentation skill, is it as a must, yes or no? Some point is really critical. You can, s you can say maybe, oh, he, um, yeah, all these points are critical, of course, when you are a salesperson, but you can have point where you believe this is a, a nice to have. But here, for each requirement, you will say, okay, it means for me that this person can bring a positive message to a client. Is he capable to call client, making cold callings, deliver results, and so on and so on. And for each point, I will ask on average between five, 10, 15 questions. Just facts. Not open questions, not closed questions, but short questions where I will know if the person has been able or is able to get 12 calls, 12 meetings with clients, able to increase the pipeline by this, able to do this, able to do that. Only questions, not dear candidate, tell me how you prospect a client. Because then you can talk during five minutes, 10 minutes, and you will not know if, he, if he's this person real, the good candidate for you, yes or no. And don't also ask questions which the answer will be yes or no. Try always to ask questions where you will put that person in a situation, where you will get information about his behavior in situations. So that's what I wanted to bring to you uh, during this uh, presentation. Do you have any question or you want to do the question after, Philip? Yes, we'll do a question and answer because I believe there will be also some other answers from uh, Philip Hornert just after. Uh, but don't hesitate, of course, to write down your questions because maybe sometimes you may forget. And as you know, every good salesperson writes everything, right? <laughs> so who knows that? Who's following me? Yes? Okay, good. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure here, um, of course, you found already some uh, very, very good. And thank you, Philippe, for... Uh, I think we can already applaud him for uh, this nice presentation. Um, actually, I don't know if we will have time or if we can do it after, but I just had an idea just while he was talking, but we could eventually, if some of you want to be uh, interviewed, and we could see how Philippe would make an interview. What do you think about that? If you think it's a good idea, think about that. And if one of you would say, oh, Philip, I think your, your idea, Philip, somebody, your idea is good, then let's make it, all right? Um, so, uh, because I know some of you are interested in knowing exactly how is a good interview. Um, all right, so we'll think about that. In the meantime, I also want to introduce <laughs> Philip Ornat, uh, who I also know very well, of course, from the past. Philippe Ornat is a real sales passionate uh, about sales, of course, and other things as well, of course. Uh, but he has been notably sales manager and sales director at Xerox and Ingram Micro and general manager of Arsius and Fagron Belgium at Omega Pharma. So since 2014, he's owner and CEO of the growing startup named Actor, so he will talk about it shortly. Uh, in his, all his role, he had to hire the best sales talents to lead his business to success. So Philippe is a true charismatic and successful sales leader. So I will be happy to, to have you here <laughs> and presenting yourself and of course, um, the thank floor you. is yours, Philippe. Thank you, Philippe, and thank you, Philippe. So, for me, <laughs> thank you, Alexandre. So, <clears throat> it's not easy for me to come after such an eloquent speaker like Philippe, and it's also not easy to have um, the floor after this uh, introduction, who is putting some um, expectations. Uh, I will try to meet those expectations, and I have, I have some slides who will back up my story. But first of all, I would like to uh, compliment 
uh, Pascal and Philippe with their initiative. Their initiative is to bring us here together and to really value um, the importance of sales. Um, if we will start up a company and then we will have costs and then we will have to manage our company and then our costs are going to explode. The solution of every problem in a company is sales. If your first line is evolving in a good area, there is no problem. And I will come back to that conclusion later on. I have prepared a short presentation. First of all, I think I should present myself also a little bit. Secondly, I would like to um, go through the relation between the company model and why there is sales and why is there a sales force? And how is this sales force fitting in the overall company structure? And thirdly, I would like to go very quickly through seven key aspects, key tasks that every person being in charge of sales, let's call him a sales manager, but that could also be the general manager or the owner, the seven aspects that we should do when we are dealing with managing a sales organization or managing a sales force. So who am I? That's not easy. Uh, that's uh, very easy. That's not difficult for me to present. My name is Philippe. I am, 20, uh, I am already uh, 52, so excuse me for that. Uh, it's, it is how it is. I have two children, uh, Nicola and Maxim, who have uh, 19 and 17. So one of them is now uh, in Werchter, and he is sending through WhatsApp very nice uh, movies. Okay, that is how I am from Brugge. Um, I discovered my talents and my communication uh, uh, nature uh, at Xerox uh, in 1987 in October. I've been working there for almost 15 years, being active in different sales, sales management, marketing management roles. Uh, after a short uh, uh, step at Ingram Micro, I uh, went to uh, Omega Pharma and a company of it, Fagron, where I have been working uh, during 11 years. Um, in a general management role, and since uh, October 2014, um, I uh, am now active as the CEO and owner of a company which is active in uh, orthopedics. Um, marketing and field sales force. What we should understand is that when we have a sales organization, it has its place in the business model. And where is that place? That is what I would like first to emphasize on and explain you. Um, what is marketing? What is marketing? Marketing is Kotler. Eh? Kotler says that marketing is products which must be brought to the marketplace, place. We should have promotion on it. Um, and um, we have a certain price. So the four P's. Marketing is a management process which is responsible for identifying, anticipating and satisfying customer requirements and this in a profitable way. Marketing is looking to the business at the business through the customer's eyes. Very important is that all different all departments of the companies are involved. And one of the aspects also why people like Philippe and Pascal and, and their company Brightbiz has its value, is that the sales is also a process. And across the company, every department must understand the language of the sales and that there is a common vocabulary. So therefore, training an organization within the sales process is sometimes very important. Um, Okay, you know what a market is and what segments is. You know what a company is and its function is. And I, I will emphasize a little bit on the company and its function. Every company has three basic functions. We will distribute products or services. Maybe we will produce them or maybe we will purchase them. We will market them. And obviously we have to do this in a profitable way. So we have, we have a finance aspect. So we have a production or purchase aspect. We have a finance aspect. We have a marketing management. And, and these can have conflicts am um, uh, amongst themselves and across themselves. Again, the value of the sales as a process, which is commonly renowned within the organization. I have been discussing this already. The, the only thing that I want to uh, say here is, how are you going 
different how are you going to differentiate your go to market will it be based on products like apple apple okay um, but if your product is the same if your pricing is the same your differentiation might come ultimately from your, the way how you present and when you talk about your presentation you talk about your go to market there you talk about your sales so meaning um um if marketing is how to organize the company to meet the customer and the customer requirements, your sales force is going to be one of your practical weapons to engage your market and go to market. So it's part of your third component of the marketing mix, the, the presentation. Prices and products might be very similar to its competition, and your key differentiator might be your sales force. So in other words, the company with the best selected trained, planned, controlled, motivated sales force might gain its market dominance if your added value is not on the product level. So uh, already here I'm talking about the role of sales management, marketing, uh, general man management versus the sales force. The development of all these qu qualities and how all these aspects are being organized might largely depend on the quality of the field sales manager, depending on the type of structure, can be the general manager and so on. So, uh, d d d I, in, in the previous point, I did want to explain to you that sales is part of your marketing, it's uh, the strategic weapon of your marketing organization is the sales. And in order to ensure that the sale across the company is being well understood as a process, Training and development might be important for the total company. Now, in the next chapter, I would like to very briefly go through seven key tasks that every sales manager, depending, depending on the sales, the size of an organization could be the general manager in, 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 in a small startup, for instance, uh, seven key tasks which are crucial for an optimum productivity of your sales organization. The first one is planning, okay, meaning what are the, ob the objective setting for the team, how am I going to apply my resources from a financial point, from a human point, and, and uh, obviously for that you have to uh, first understand which tools, which uh, uh, enabling do I have, and obviously also you have to manage your cost structure in that. So the first key task is planning. The second one is the organization. The organization, um, identification of your workload. Uh, which, mar which is my market? How many calls will I go going to do in my market? So I, I, will, I will identify in my planning stage where is my market, how many prospects do I want to meet, what is the average, how often am I going to contact them, what is my call rate and how many days do I have available? That's the second thing. The third thing, and I don't want to come back to, to, to the expose of Philippe, but a key role in your sales management organization is obviously your recruitment process. So Philippe has explained in detail um, the, 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 the value of your interview process. Um, I would like to also stress that before you have the interview process, please ensure that you know what you need. What, 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 which tasks do we expect? A functie beschrijving, a description de job, your job description. Think about it within your organization. What do we need? Which tasks does this person have to fulfill? You construct your person filing, you go through your process, um, um, reference checking obviously important and then ev evaluate and place. Um, I, I must admit that I don't always have the discipline, Philippe, um, to go through your process and systematic approach during the interview. It's one of my weaknesses, excuse me. But okay, I know it. So how do I counterpart it? I really ensure that the interview is part of my total process and very often I have a second interview and also very often, and that's a methodology that I feel very familiar with, is that after my second interview, I still have some doubts and so on, 
I sent the interviewee, the candidate, I sent them back home. And I say to him, please prepare for me a PowerPoint presentation. 10 slides, 12 slides maximum. And please, within that, inter within that PowerPoint presentation, give me an answer to four basic questions. Who am I? How should I approach this job? Why am I so particularly interested to come to your company and fulfill this job? And which training and development, which prerequisites do I need prior that I will start to be effective in that job? This asks from the candidate a few hours preparation, a thinking process, also an adherence process. Do I want to come to your company? Hey, how would I do that? I, am I really interested to go there? Which skills do I need? So when, this, when your candidate goes through the process of thinking about it, he will, he will or adhere. Two out of ten give me a call the day later and say, it's not for me, you know? So um, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Eight out of ten are extremely motivated, come back to you, and it's, it's a part of a step and a total process, and that's how I try to, c to counterpart my weakness uh, due to my lack of systematic approach during the, the, the interview. Now, okay, I have done my planning, I have done my organizing, my staffing, I've gone through my recruitment. <laughs> yeah, and now, are they okay? Are they in place? Are the skills okay? Is the motivation okay? Is the attitude and the behavior okay? Uh, I'm not sure. So now we come to some of the most crucial aspects in the role of a sales manager. And, and maybe sometimes we, we have to ask support in that process, um, in a planned, systematic approach. It's training and development. You have the formal training, you have the on-the-job training, and you have the work session. A fifth element, okay, I have acquired my sales force, I have trained them, and now I have to motivate them. I have to ensure that they are productive. And the one that I think the topic was, we are going to recruit people, we are going to develop them, but we also want to maintain them. This happens through the motivating process. What are motivational factors? Obviously the remuneration, the direct incentives, the job satisfaction, the security, and the status which is implied, which is um, involved uh, with the job. Do people have the right attitude to do the job? Do they have the willingness to agree the objectives? So here I come to um, my, um, my um, uh, fa favorite thing, which is Q times Q is R. So the quantity of the activity times the quality of the activity is the performance of the results. The quantity of the activity depends on the motivation. Am I motivated? How can you check? How do you have to deal as a sales manager with motivation? It's through counseling. It's through asking questions. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> How's your wife? How are your kids? Motivation, factors. And the quality of the activity is the skills. Do I have the appropriate knowledge and the appropriate skills to perform my job? Those are uh, the aspects. In both, in both, the sales manager or external training consultants, which might support you in that process, are, are crucial. So skills happens through training and development, motivation, through incentives, financial aspects. How are we going to um, uh, observe it? How is the manager going to exploit his leadership? It's through um, observation, observation in action, and also through individual discussion uh, and counseling and, and coaching. The sixth aspect is um, more a, um, a factual thing. It's controlling. Eh? Um, confidence is not good. You have to give confidence to your people. Trust and confidence is crucial. Please, please invest in relationship. Please invest in 
and, and mutual confidence and mutual respect. But please let that not be an excuse to not um, analyze facts and figures and data. You have to analyze data. So data can be, depending on your uh, reporting system and reporting abilities and so on. I, I hope this is clear, you can set standards and, and so on, I, I can explain, but I think this is clear. And then the last aspect, and for me, on, honestly, that's also a very, very, very important aspect. If you would uh, ask me for my top two preferences uh, or in the roles or out of those seven, one would definitely be the training role, but the second one would definitely also be the monitoring role. So we have agreed on standards, we have agreed on objectives, we have agreed on how to do it. During that process, please check how the evolution goes. It's monitoring. We all know we are going to go to Rome. But where are we now? Are we already in Paris? Uh, was there a problem with the train back to Paris? So monitoring is um, is just seeking feedback on where we are uh, in, in the process. So I, I, I always have a nice one. We delegate tasks, we delegate responsibilities. And we want other people to fulfill tasks which will serve to our objective. If we delegate it and we do not monitor, we abdicate. Meaning we're not interested anymore. We have to give the feeling to people that what we have been delegating is important for the company. So how are we doing with it? Is, is it going okay? Is, uh, is Rome going to be achieved by tomorrow? Or, and so on. So I just give a stupid example. Delegation without monitoring is abdication. Okay. Um, so voila. Uh, that's basically what I would like to say about the role of a sales manager. Uh, a good sales manager is not a super salesman, obviously. It's a businessman who takes the overall responsibility of those seven tasks. And um, I also would like to say um, this is one of the things that I learned when I get, went to my uh, sales management uh, training at Xerox when I was uh, 24. <coughs> that, was it. that was in the UK. And they use the sentence. They say, eh, you don't have to do the task of your salespeople. It's not you who must make the sales call and the closing call. Because when you do that, you fish for them. You don't have to fish for them. You have to learn them how to fish. Because if you fish for them, you will only have a fish for one day. But if you learn them how to fish, they will be able to eat fish all their life. So thank you very much. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, Philippe. Uh, excellent, excellent presentation. I uh, was Thanks. standing behind as well as um, as you were in the audience, and I was just amazed, actually, by both uh, presentation. And thank you again for that. So I would like to invite both of you to um, to have uh, this more discussion uh, about what we. Um, of course, about what we, we, we talk about, our main topic today, uh, which is um, hiring sales. Um, so I, I suppose you do want to present those slides, probably. OK, good. So all right. That's for next time. Eh? For next time. You have to come back, eh? <clears throat> OK, so tonight, I, um, usually we are in the office. So I thought it's good to be outside today. So I, I, I chose a nice background. I hope you like it. Yeah, good. So, um, so I have several questions. And of course, uh, your questions are absolutely welcome. Um, but let's start again about hiring, because we talked about uh, two approaches, by the way, uh, which are different, but uh, very interesting. So uh, of course, always lead to Rome. We know that. Um, so. When, when you start, like, uh, let's start with uh, um, Philippe, indeed, uh, because he's smiling to me, so I suppose he wants to talk. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It so depends what you will ask. He was just like, <laughs> hey, yes, me. Uh, OK. Uh, OK, tomorrow, you, let's say you need to hire someone. And maybe there will be a someone who wants to be hired, by the way. 
And um, so, how do you do? Do you do, um, and, and maybe you can take your example from the, all your past examples, because I know now you're working in a big corporation. Um, but if you need to search for someone, how do you start? You call your friends, you, you put a LinkedIn uh, uh, ad, or you ask to headhunters. What's your way to search? So first of all, I will look if internally I can have someone that can fulfill the job. Because priority will be to uh, promote, I will say, internally people. That, that's for sure. I will first say, is there someone in the team capable to do what I'm looking for? If the answer is no, then, okay, do I know someone which can fulfill outside this, this job? The danger with that is that when it's... Um, when you know already the person, you can have some, I will say, um, you, you, you can say, okay, I, I, I know this, he's good, I know him pretty well. So it's subjective, not it's, with facts, what you're talking about. It's not fixed facts, yes. That's yeah. what, it's more subjective, as you said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, I will, of course, uh, we have a recruitment team as well. So then I will say, okay, screen the market, find this person with this profile because we need to achieve this, 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 and with the questions. But first I will look internally. Mm -hmm. All right, so internally, uh, but let's say you are a startup because you had your own startup. Let's say you need to hire someone. How do you do? You have no one internally, right? Yeah, then I need to need to, I need to to look to the market. Yes. Okay. And do you do yourself, or you ask to uh, someone else? Because it, it takes a lot of time. I did it myself. And um, how do you? How would you do or advise? Uh, uh, again, I would say um, talk to people that you know among your in, in your network and see if you can find someone having this this profile there. Okay. Philippe, maybe you can also answer, because I know, you know, um, good salespeople, you, you, it's not easy to find. So what are your suggestions about the same questions? How would you hire? How would you search and find? Yeah, first of all, what I would like all of you to advise is if you um, publish a new role, think about what you need. Eh? So very often in organizations, um, we, we don't spend enough time to the first step in the process, which is, Description de la fonction, function beschrijving, job description. What do I really need in my organization? First step. Second step is please ensure that you have an objective procedure. Eh? So please ensure that you have a, that the, 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 the application forms that come in, the curriculum vitae from the people, that they go through a process. A, a way, definitely when you are more a bigger company, it's, it's important for me to have an objective. So my best friend is going to send his CV. Is my best friend going to be hired because he's my best friend? No, my best friend is going to be hired if he is the most uh, appropriate candidate and when he also goes through the same formal process like all the other people. That's definitely also a suggestion. And then obviously how to find um, application forms, how to ensure that you have a, I would say today, uh, use social media. Use social media, use LinkedIn, use Facebook, use Twitter, uh, use your own website if you have one, use your own network. Um, uh, th that's a very, very, very important uh, way of, uh, obviously, it's also the, 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 the level of application forms that you are going to have in, in your inbox of, or, or as an answer will be the consequence of the success of your branding of your company. The better you brand your company, the better people will discover your company. So it's, it's an integrated process with the overall branding. Please ensure that people know your product, know your company. And uh, if, you have some, if you need some branding advice, we can talk about it. <laughs> so concretely, at Actor, if you need to hire a good salesperson, you, you hire it through LinkedIn or you post it on yes. LinkedIn, Facebook yes. and so we, on? We don't, yeah. we don't use uh, headhunters or, uh, no. or, mon uh, or, or, or other uh, uh, professional recruitment. Uh, mm -hmm. No, we do it ourselves. Uh, yeah. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I had some uh, experience at Twitter Pro, and it's a, it's a process. It takes time, unfortunately, but 
it's really worth it. And I use LinkedIn uh, for the occasion. Uh, you were talking about talking branding about the company, and I think this is very important. I've seen personally, um, I had interviews with companies, and what I was surprised, and I don't know how you deal with that, um, that the company itself don't sell themselves. It's just like I was needed to sell my uh, competency, but I felt like there is no traction from the company. But I think it's a win-win. And so what, what is when you have an interview, do you uh, really proud of your company? You sell that, OK, uh, it's not like I'm arrogant, and you are the one who needs a job and who wants to come here. Uh, how, how do you deal with that? I will say I'm I'm lucky to be one. So I was leading the office in Luxembourg uh, of one of the leading IT company uh, in in the world. So I got many attraction. I mean, many people wanted to to join our our, our team, and, and in fact, um, branding is is what was part of what we offer actually. So I, I was in a quite comfortable position, uh, honestly speaking. Um, so. Is it because you have a big brand, a nice name, or even that you don't need to tell how is the environment, what is the advantage to work in the company? It's not the brand that makes all. Can it's we not, agree on it's that? not only the brand, but it's also, I would say, what what people can have from our company. They uh, evolution. They know that when they join our company, there will be evolution. Um, I believe that they are also attracted by the condition, the package offered by our company to, uh, let's be clear, uh, I mean, uh, people know that uh, by joining uh, a, a big... According to you, what are the criteria? Give me yeah. five criteria that you think that a candidate would um, go to your company or another company you would work for, whatever, which is a small or a bigger. What are you think? If I am your client and uh, you need to sell me, Philippe, come to work mm -hmm. in my company, mm -hmm. what are, according to you, my five criteria to come to work for you? So first, um, I would say that... Um, the and maybe think about that. What are your criteria? Maybe I would like also you tell what are the criteria that Philippe didn't tell that you would give, all right? Think about that. I would but like to hear yours as well. As I said, first the name of the company uh, the the breadth of the what what i would say what I, if you are expert in it okay the brand what others you would say if you are expert in it i mean joining a company which is a leading one it's it's also very important as i said brand you said salary what, as well yeah, that's a what, second what's the positioning in the market yeah are we on i would say a on top right or bottom bottom left in terms of wh what is the positioning in our market? Then, as I said, the the there's a second, the, the third one. The third one, I will say also the 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 package, the, the what, no the, the the training. I mean, what can we offer in terms okay. of career development? Okay, development yes. possibilities. Yes, that's a good one yes. as well. Yes, and also as I said, uh, the what, what's the Conditions to uh, s people are interested to to, to earn money. I, I mean, okay, and are really package. interested to be t in a challenging environment and make sure that if they join a company like us, they will get a lot of money. Yes. Okay, salary and uh, I, salary. I, I want a it fifth for one. the sales. It's uh, very. I will say. Of it's course, very, it's very important. important. Yeah. And what else would you add to that? Because I, I personally have others as well. But I would like to also. But tell me what it would be <laughs> your fifth one. Okay, then. first I will. Uh, for me, for example, what is important is the work environment. I would like to um, to be in a company where I feel you know we're in a family. If I remember, uh, and Philippe actually he was my director, and between us there was a manager, and I remember we were feeling like a family. Everyone we were talking um, in the company, we were 350 or 400 people. Uh, we looked at each other, we say hello to each other. So I think, you know, even if you're a big company or a small company, by the way, uh, it's something <clears throat> that I personally value. Another one is uh, less administra administrative stuff, because I'm, as a salesperson, what I love is having 
doing my job is selling, being outside, meeting clients. Of course, there are some things that I need to do into my admin, like the CRM. I agree, there are things we need to do. But in the end of the day, I don't want, you know, for asking for pricing, like having like four hours of work and, and stuff like this. So work environment is for me very important. Yeah, but do you know that in advance? Do you know that in advance before joining the company? So it's something maybe so if you I ask I me what I want. <laughs> you, you don't know that you, you, you take four hours of your time to get a quote or an offer, I mean. So as a salesperson, if you want also to sell your company, you would ask me the questions what I ask for uh, working for you. And then I would answer you my criteria. And then it would be a good match to know. Yeah. So maybe that's good advice. Ask to your future employee, what are your requirements? What do you ask from your company? And if you see that things doesn't match, you will see uh, in what term of priority this match with you or not. Uh, I would like to listen also maybe. I personally never got that question. You are the first one asking such question, how long <laughs> it takes to produce an offer. Okay. Can I just uh, comment on it? Um, I think basically um, we all look, um, when we work in a company, what do we look for? You were asking for five things, Philippe. I would like to focus on two aspects. The first one is self-development. I think people, when they have a job, they want to, um, they want to develop themselves. They want training, they want... Uh, and as a consequence of that self-development will come social mobility. Meaning, through my job, I might become somebody in the world. Um, uh, so self-development is for... Me, okay, that's for me very important, but I think that's for a lot of other people. And the second thing is, and, and that has to deal with your work environment, but I would like to focus more globally on work environment. People want to be part of a team. People want to be, belong to a family. We want to be able to identify ourselves on cultural aspects, on behavior. We are together. So if people find those two aspects in a company, meaning I will have the ability to develop myself, to, to value my competences within this role, and as a consequence of that, I might evolve as a human being, and. That that's not on, only career, but that's also I can evolve on the social uh, scale. Uh, firstly and secondly, if they, if they really have the feeling this company culture, my colleagues the, this will will give me a family aspect, and it's all together. If these are for me, I think two aspects, two two important aspects. Thank you. Do, I, do you have also some things that you would say, okay, when I, I go to work for a company, whether as an employee, as a sales, or not sales, by the way, what are your criteria? Can, can you give me some words that you think about it? A leader. A leader. So you someone who can inspire you. Someone who can inspire you. So it's, 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 it comes with uh, the growing aspect. So people want to become someone. Huh? When they start a job, and especially in a startup, I think, um, they, they try to grow, and the, the, the role of the owner is also to inspire, to give inspiration. That's, that's an interesting one, I think. But yeah, it's absolutely good. I, I like what you say because, uh, and this is a good time to make honor to Michel Heron, uh, who is actually, he was my first manager at Xerox, and you knew him actually, so it's very interesting that, yeah, so it's very interesting you, you mentioned that. Maybe we think about the same, but uh, he, he, is, uh, he was a true leader and he got respect and actually he changed our lives, I think, somehow. And uh, it's true that uh, a, a sales manager, someone who will hire you, or even a manager in general, you need to have that leader who will help you to move forward. And we talk about training, but it's also about coaching. For me, the man my manager has always respect if he can teach me something, he can put me further up, right? And I think that's, uh, we'll all agree, and Pascal as well, that it's very important because Pascal also has been a manager and team leader uh, of a sales team at Xerox as well. We, we talked about a lot about that. Are there other things that, when you want to be higher, that you think that's, for me, very important? Do you have any? Yeah, Thomas? Yeah, we already talked about the, um, the company, which is really important. But for me, uh, the more, more, most important thing is uh, the product that I will have to sell. 
because you can sell, uh, I don't know, smartphone. Uh, you can work for Acer or for Apple. They both do basically the same thing uh, regarding for the smartphone that they sell, but it's not the same thing. It's not the same, uh, the same product that you sell. Because there is a lot of marketing uh, uh, behind uh, those products, and really selling a, a product is really, really important. Thank you very much. I think it's an excellent uh, thing. A good salesperson needs to believe not only in the company, but needs to believe in the product he's selling. Um, I can personally cannot sell uh, something I don't believe in. Right, and you're right uh, because even in big corporate or a small company, um, there's evolution also of uh, the situation of the market and everything. Sometimes you can start very low in the market, but there's a potential of growth which is incredible. And also, if you believe in what you are selling, then you can help and be part of the game into growing with that company. And that's actually what I love into startups um, and. <laughs> you are in, in one of them, actually. Um, any other very good answers? I love your answers. Have anyone, if you need to be higher? Uh, yes? OK. Uh, wait, I give you the microphone. I do some sport tonight, it's as I didn't have time yesterday. Okay. <laughs> it's a very specific one, but uh, stock options. Uh, so it's oh. part of the package. But do you offer, especially in a startup, do you offer stock options to uh, salespeople? I would like also maybe you talk about that because I, I read an article someday, but I don't re fully remember you will talk about that. About actor, what did you do? Um, yeah, the we, we live in Belgium, uh, meaning we have to pay 21% VAT when we go to the restaurant. When you pay a salary to somebody, there is 35% um, uh, gross. Uh, um, social security contribution and then uh, when you're a, a salary uh, you, you pay 45 or 50 percent uh, um, um, uh, belasting um, taxes taxes so 21 percent VAT 25 percent social security 45 or 50 percent uh, taxes hmm. not easy in Belgium to uh, to, to, to it, it's tough it's very tough so, uh, one of the rare things that do exist is uh, stock option programs, um, where based on, uh, but they, this is not without risk, uh, based on the value growth of your organization um, during uh, a period or three, five, seven years, you can, um, so for instance, I can give you, I have a company, like 100%. I can give you an option to buy 1% shares of my company um, and you have the right to have that at the value of today, 2017. And if the company in 2020, for, for tw to, let's say to, to 2022, within five years, is growing, you have the right to execute that uh, option uh, that becomes a share at the price of 2017, meaning one. And if then the company has grown and become three, you will immediately sell it to three. You also have the obligation to sell it to three. And your profit is two. And you don't pay any taxes on it. So that's one of the rare systems that do exist. These are complicated programs. Uh, you must be as a, as a as a company owner. You must be guided and coached by it by the by the EYs or the KPMGs of the PWCs of this world. Um, but this can mean for people important values. It's not without risks. Meaning, if the company in 2022 is still one, <laughs> then uh, one and one is zero. So you ha then you have been, but these are not only retention programs; um, these are also fiscally extremely uh, interesting packages. Uh, you, 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 as an owner of a company, as a shareholder, you you can uh, choose whoever you want. So meaning. <laughs> 
it's, it's a secret or no it's i i have such a program for uh the most important persons so and and uh, so we are a company of 85 and how many people would have it <laughs> have a guess six you got one point huh? you are the closest maybe you deserve something <laughs> such a prize okay If it's working yes. for a company that's not working for a stock yes. exchange, yes. Yes. And it's not very liquid. So uh, in five years from now, if you're still not on, on, the, on the stock exchange. Yes, it becomes liquid. It is the company, as a shareholder of the company, the owner of the company who has to pay it through his dividends. Yeah, it's a share. It doesn't need to be public or not public. And um, yeah, absolutely. All right. So um, <coughs> coming back to um, hiring. I think uh, there is something which is very important and is the attitude, right? Uh, <laughs> so, of course, attitude can change if we are tired or less tired. Uh, the attitude is not flat, but somehow, of course, um, the attitude is something important uh, all the time. Because, uh, of course, for the when we are higher, we can give a good impression to the manager. And sometimes, by the way, uh, because of uh, a good attitude for it only one one time or two times for the interviews, and after we don't have a, a good attitude, I think that that can be quite tricky. I would like to uh, listen to your experience. Did you have already like a good impression, and you make a mistake about um, maybe the attitude of the the salesperson? I think about my own experience. I've seen around me like a guy. Uh, he was told like, to, to have a very good candidate, he joined the company, and then after, like, I don't see any activity, I don't see his signing anything, and then, yeah, so it was not a good, good, uh, good uh, candidate in the end of the day. Did you have that uh, kind of about attitude? Um, yeah, I think that what I'm, I'm also expecting from people coming uh, and, and being candidate, I also expect smart questions from them. So I also expect interaction, meaning, okay, it's not, the candidate is not there just to answer my questions. I also expect the candidate in terms of, uh, of attitude to come and also by questioning me, showing me he's interested, really interested to get this job. And also, I, I also expect that, um, as you said, that what, what is his plan and vision? Imagine that tomorrow you will join a company. I often ask that question. Imagine you, are, you, you, you join our company. What will you do first? Yeah. So things like that. And by this, I, I want to, to see if that person projects him, himself already in the company. This is to answer your question, Philippe.